yeah, we we wanted to talk today about test harnesses, self testing, um, interoper conformance testing, interoperability testing, and just get a sort of update uh, and you know links on any new stuff happening. So yeah, Stephen, if you wanna All right. take it away, we can we can start with the Aries. Sure. Um, Aries interoperability testing is what we're talking about. Um, sort of bring folks up to date on where Aries is for those um, who aren't day to day involved. Um, talk about interoperability, so that because that's um, big with us, and we use a thing called an Aries agent test harness um, to do that. Um, Aries inter interoperability status. We're now publishing a um, updated status on a regular basis of how we're doing on interoperability and then talk about a couple of additions and things in, in Aries and a fun little uh, demo on wallet interoperability testing, which is kind of fun. Um, things that are on your mobile phone and how do you, uh, how do, you do testing on that without, uh, you know, with as little effort as possible. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, for those not familiar, um, Hyperledger Aries is um, a product that's spun out of um, early work in Indy, uh, Hyperledger Indy. Um, but it's, it's quite different. It, it implements um, layer two and three of the trust over IP technical stack. So transport agnostic secure messaging based on DIDs. So DIDCOM at layer two, and then at layer three, uh, message-based protocols um, using the messaging of DIDCOM to do data exchange and particularly verifiable credential data exchange. So that's basically um, where Aries fits in. Um, it is, uh, it was originally designed to be agnostic to the ledger and though it spun out of Indy and was initially quite tied to Indy in the first implementations, we now um, have gotten um, so a lot of momentum on um, becoming agnostic to Indy or any other ledger. So um, uh, Aries Framework Go from the ground up was a non Indy implementation of Aries. Um, Akapai now has um, a PR that uh, I've linked in there to a uh, did resolver, which will allow us to resolve for that Aries implementation to any ledger, um, uh, the ability to plug in specific local uh, resolvers and use a universal resolver. And then as well, um, uh, SICPA started in the DHS uh, SVIP program to add JSON LD verifiable credentials um, into Aries um, and in, in particular into Akapai Aries Cloud Agent Python. And so um, what we're now, uh, we're adding additional support to that. And as well, we're adding um, BBS plus. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, many implementations, um, there's five open source frameworks on which to build deployments and agents and, and uh, numerous closed source uh, uh, um, implementations such as Evernims um, uh, in the community. Uh, many um, mobile wallet apps. Um, you can go into the app store and find, um, you know, five or six in there now based on Aries. Um, Aries interop profile AIP, I'm going to use that term a bunch, um, is how we align um, how, uh, getting multiple implementations that are done by entirely separate organizations aligned so that we have interoperability. Uh, V1 of that was 2020. That was largely based on Indy um, credentials, at least, and um, the use of Indy and Peer Did for um, DIDCOM. And then V2, which is under conversation now, we're almost finished it. Uh, we keep saying that each week. We're, we're very close to having it defined. And it's where we expand out to use many did, um, did you know, it, many different ledgers, and we use um, the different JSON LD verifiable credentials. So talk about that. Uh, lots of live use cases um, from NHS in Britain. Um, lots of things we're doing here in BC. Uh, Orbook, um, SICPA is doing a pile of things. Kiva in Sierra Leone. Um, uh, IATA is working on Aries. You know, lots of lots of activity in many places and, and many many proof of concepts and things like that happening. So interoperability, that's what we're here for. Um, BC Gov's put a lot of focus and funding into that. Um, our goal is to mimic a um, John's model, John Jordan's model for that is um, 
University of New Hampshire has a networking oper interoperability lab where you basically Cisco takes its new networking equipment and takes it into a lab and plugs it in and, and checks it against everyone else and what they're doing. And that's really what we're trying to do. Um, uh, create a, a mechanism so that we can test all sorts of different things and, and have things running against each other in a, in a clear way. So I'll, uh, rather than explaining that last bit, I'll, I'll just show the picture. This is the architecture of what it looks like. So um, ARIES is made up of a whole series of protocols for things like credential exchange and uh, establishing connections and so on. So uh, a series of scripts are the test cases. Um, they are fed into a, a behavior-driven uh, development uh, engine, a BDD engine that executes the tests. So there's a Python implementation of all the steps for all the tests. And after every test, um, we collect up the test run results. Um, an execution of, uh, of the tests runs four different agents, um, Acme, Bob, Faber, and Mallory, roughly an issuer, a holder, a verifier and a sometimes malicious holder. So that's what the four of them are. And all of them run a test agent. A test agent is something that you want to test, an Aries thingy. Um, and then a, a way to control it against a standard interface. So the test harness uses a standard API and sends the same messages or the same family, uh, you know, AI or uses the same API for all of the test agents, says, hey, do this. The back channel instructs the thing that's being tested to do this. And then um, DIDCOM and, and the agent's um, natural habitat is used to actually have the connections established and the, and the communications and the protocol executed. So that's basically how um, the architecture works. Um, so we've posted this website, uh, Aries Interop Info. And let me just jump to that. And it basically um, shows uh, the um, results um, as we go forward of the testing. So basically what you've got is the various test agents that have been implemented. So these are the four that exist today, um, four different implementations. These are test agents that use these four frameworks. Uh, every day we run tests that execute um, uh, one or more of the agents together. And this, this um, grid shows the, the cross between them. So Akapai and Aries Framework JavaScript, 53 of the 62 tests in the test suite pass right now. And so you can see different. Um, these ones show all of the tests that are being executed by each one and how many are passing. Um, some of them have a scope of AIP1 or AIP2. And so not all tests are going against each other. Um, there's lots of drill down in this. So um, if I drill down into one of them, I get a list of these are the, the basically the test runs that are run each day. Um, so a test run consists of um, a, a combination of agents, um, Akapai main, JavaScript, and so on. This one is actually running three agents. Um, in the entire tests, um, the scope of the tests. So it's running a specific subset of the tests and then how successful it is. Um, the, uh, uh, as mentioned, um, we primarily pull the live code uh, from, you know, that's up to how the, the test agent is configured, but we usually pull the code on a daily basis to construct the um, container that contains the test agent and then execute the tests. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, there is lots of cool drill down. Um, I think it's this link. So if I go down here, I can see, okay, these are the protocol families that are being executed as part of that test set. And then I can also see, you know, which ones are passing, which ones are failing. And then this website has, um, you know, history. Um, these are the last 48 occurrences. Um, which tests are passing and so on, the categories, and I can drill down into the exact details of all the tests. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm not looking at chat or answering questions yet, but um, feel free to um, talk to me after. Um, there is 
uh, information on the website, like uh, about the run sets, what's in them, uh, and, and more background. And of course, there's tons of information on the uh, Aries Agent test harness site itself that has the details of how you build a test agent, how you run them locally, and so on. Uh, I'm going to show it running. So let me just show, talk about a couple of things. Um, AIP2 allows credential exchange where you can use different credential formats. So Indian on creds, as, as mentioned, is the basis. It's been working for four years, you know, has so much capability that we're looking for in all the different credentials, the ZKP capability, the crucial selective disclosure, um, those things. So that is still core. But now we've added JSON-LD, um, the same signature being used in the SVIP program. And then we're adding, uh, at, we're adding as well right now, um, we've got a pull request in for BBS Plus so that we get both um, W3C standard verifiable credentials, we get ZKP and we get selective disclosure. So that really is where we're seeing the future is, is moving there. Um, we did a code with us opportunity. So a $60,000 Canadian um, request for uh, people to implement this work. Uh, Animo Solutions uh, was the winner based in the Netherlands. They're doing a fantastic job. They're awesome. A um, couple of them are on the call today and I can't say enough about how well, they, uh, how well they've done. Um, they also did a bunch of work on the test harness as well for us. Um, they extended um, some work done by SICPA um, from the SVIP program to add, they added um, JSON-LD to Aries itself, but what uh, Animo did was made it so that the protocols that um, Aries supports now include JSON-LD with LD signatures. They've added support for BBS plus signatures as well as adding that to the verifiable credentials um, protocols. Um, there's that part. Uh, did resolver work has been added by SICPA and that will that's part of what's being used by, the, um, by these uh, credential exchanges. We've got a guy on our team, Shanjat Gill, who's added diff presentation exchange support. Um, so that's in there as well. And of course, acceptance for this is driven by the ARIES agent test harness. So we wanna make sure how we accept the code is by making sure we've got tests running. So I'm gonna to try to do this. Um, I sped this up and I didn't realize there was voiceover. So I'm gonna silence this but I'm gonna take a shot at running this. And this just will show you how the test harness runs, what it looks like um, and how it operates. The test you can see over here. And then we've added an additional test uh, that showcases the new credential form. In this case, the so I'll silence Timo as he talks through it. So these are the two tests. This is an Indy uh, credential. And then this is a JSON LD credential that are running. So we're gonna run two tests. We're going to use his version of Acapi for all four agents. So Acme, Bob, Faber are all the same agents. These could be separate all the time. So the agents start up and they begin to execute the test. So this is the starting of the test executing. We're creating a public did. We're adding a credential onto the ledger for Indy. Um, Acme and Bob are getting a connection, proposing a credential and issuing that credential. So that's the entire test. So Acme's issued it, Bob has it. Now we're doing the same thing with JSON-LD. So the same set of steps, the setup is different because of the uh, LD credentials is slightly different of how it does it. Um, but uh, the process is the same and the protocol, so the protocol is the same, the ARIES protocol is the same. It's just using different attachments to use the different um, credential formats. Um, but all of that is done the same way. So um, big kudos to um, NMO and team. So I want to highlight the work they've done on that and the support they've got from the folks on BC Gov and SICPA that have helped out on um, getting everything ready to allow that. Um, the next one I wanna do, I'm almost out of time. I promised I'd be uh, quick, but I, want, I just wanna show this. This is kind of fun. I'll uh, jump ahead into the middle of this, but basically we've created a test agent. So the same format of container, but it runs uh, and displays QR codes such that I can take a, a, an app from an app store or from Google Play, and I can run all of these same tests, just like we run with all of the other agents, all within containers on the command line, but we can use a mobile agent. Um, so I, I'll just start this up. 
um, and I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, but basically, this is going to do a similar scenario um, as we did previously. I'll jump to this point, and uh, it just sort of shows you that once we start it up, we get a QR code in the middle of that. And so what we're doing here is uh, establishing a connection using the QR code displayed in the terminal. Um, over here, you're going to see Ian bring up um, his mobile agent. So this is the Trinsic wallet running, um, scanning that QR code, and then it establishes a connection. So the controller, the, um, the test agent, is the combination of wallet plus the person running the wallet. So kind of cool stuff. Um, I kind of like that one because that allows us to do a lot of the testing. We, we were trying to figure out how to do mobile testing. A lot of the agents are mobile, Aries agents are mobile. So how do we do that? Uh, this is the easiest way to do it. Obviously very nice if we could build that into a container and running it in a, in a CI context, um, but this allows us to run it in um, just just any wallet, just get it out of the store and, and use it and run it. Um, here I've put a bunch of links for folks who wanna ask more questions, um, look at the Aries Interop um, protocols, um, how we're getting to AIP one and two and so on. And I feel like I rushed through that, but Juan, I'm hopefully right on time. So hopefully that's good. The, the timing is impressive. <laughs> that was so much material for 15 minutes. Uh, I, I assume there are some questions. Uh, I think uh, David was asking about the status of BBS Plus um, yeah. and the predicate proof part of it specifically. Yeah, so, um, predicate proof is not there and, and not really, uh, at this point, not planned. I don't think anyone is um, actively working on it. I think there's a couple of ideas that it could be done. What I would love to see is a really constrained version of it um, that it would allow us to at least do date um, proofs, since that is, uh, you know, the biggest use case. Um, so uh, have a date represented as a number and be able to do a predicate on that. I'm not sure where that's going to come. For us, the big thing is not having a unique identifier that we present and being able to do selective disclosure. So the citizen can um, not just simply not provide information that's not needed. So um, for the for the transaction they're accomplishing. So those are our two goals, and that's why we feel it's um, you know it's it's going to be good enough. Um, the other thing I really want to push on is revocation. Okay. And the the BBS plus re, the revocable BBS plus is. Um, where, where is that happening? <laughs> Still hanging out there. I mean, okay. um, right now, I think the what if necessary, we wind up using the Digital Bazaar 2020. I think it's called um, Revocation Registry, but that's um, really um, that that basically gives you an identifier for every credential and every user, and and you know, mm -hmm. uh, an identifier for every user is something we want to avoid. Um, so yeah, Nodder uh, mentioned Mike Lauder's working on that. I would just love to see it. I think he's got a really solid plan for how it can work and scale, um, but I want to see it. Oh, I want to see it. Uh, IIW is in four weeks, so I, we he'll, he'll show something in four weeks. <laughs> um, as far as the state of this, um, the uh, secure team and Aries Framework Go, they've had um, BBS Plus for a bit. They've got Presentation Exchange in there. Timo and team is... is, is running hard to get that all in to occupy the Aries Cloud Agent Python by next week because um, uh, that's when uh, the challenge, the uh, code with us opportunity wraps up. So um, hmm. we're really excited about that. I got a demo the other day of, of the work they're doing. It's fantastic. Great. Um, sorry, I'm trying to scroll up to see what else. Uh, I think a lot of these were messages between people. Um, yeah, uh, who, who else had questions? Uh, you can raise your hand or you plus. Cool. Any, any questions? I mean, I'm, I'm particularly curious about the, the test harness stuff. Um, I assume the, the links page had links to documentation for how people can yeah, plug in new components. Of 
So we've got a, a team working on this. We've got several people working on it. Um, the, you know, it's really expanded out over the last, for a long time, it was, we were doing Akapai to Akapai and, and making sure all of our stuff was there. Now, now we've got four of them in there. We're working closely with the um, uh, Aries Framework Go team since they're doing AIP2. Um, they're not as tied in with the earlier work we're doing, but now we, that we've got uh, enough in, 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 in our code base um, we're doing a lot more integration with them, um, added the page to, you know, we, we recently added the daily runs. So we're pulling the latest code and then executing them on a daily basis, tracking the results, looking for uh, variations. We're now starting to make changes based on, hey, this didn't work. You know, we did this change. We put it into the, the main branch and now it's broken some of the tests. What have we got to do to fix that? Um, and forcing the um, interop conversations that we really want to have. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, Andreas? Yeah. Um, could you uh, speak a little bit more about Mallory and and how the the um, and how Mallory is? Um, I don't know why you're why you chose the the do the name of the doomed first person who tried to climb Mount Everest, but. Um, <laughs> But I, I is like, it's like, is that was that to 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 show that you know you will never succeed in breaking it. So I, I think I, so. But joking aside, so yeah. what type of what type of attack vectors are are you are you are you running running in, in the test harnesses? Uh, because that is something that I find um, extremely good and is rarely done, if I might say, except except in an automated fashion. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there, there's done a lot of pen, you know, it's like pen testing, but it's like not, 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 not at this level. Um, we haven't done, so we've got a couple of tests which attempt to, for instance, um, respond to, you know, uh, Bob gets a invitation, but Mallory uses it or Mallory attempts to use Bob's invitation after and things like that. Um, so no, uh, quite frankly, not that much yet, but that's the intention is exactly that, is we've got a second holder that when necessary can be malicious and try to um, you know, send replays or, or send those types of um, test cases, it's, uh, handle those types of test cases. But confession, we haven't done a whole lot with Mallory yet. One more quick thing, um, Kubernetes, yes, no? Um, all of our stuff runs on Kubernetes. Um, so Air, like um, the, the uh, Aries components, um, the frameworks, I think are all Kubernetes friendly and, and all run there. We, um, Akapai recently added um, multi-tenant support so we can have multiple wallets in an implementation. So we're starting to do things like um, create a, a uh, place where all BC Gov um, components can issue, have their own wallet and issue credentials, for example, um, from a single instance of it um, and all running on top of Kubernetes and scaling as necessary. Great. Cool. Um, yeah, what other questions that people have? I, I wanted to mention, um, that um, another sort of sandbox for self-testing and, and experimenting uh, was recently, uh, I guess, um, open source and presented on a TOIP call and links are in the notes uh, by a diff member uh, called iGrant. And uh, that's, uh, I, I, it would, I thought that it would have been too crowded to have them also present it today, but on a future call we'll be talking about that, I hope, uh, but the links are already in the in the notes if anyone's curious about uh, building or testing new Aries components. Um, but yeah, this this was really great. I'm, I'm glad you uh, showed so much of that in 15 minutes. Um, are, th are there other questions? People, uh, if no one has a question, I, since you're already being recorded and have a full house, um, could you talk a little about what AIP two adds to AIP one. Like, what what are the new things under test? Yeah, the big thing is um, uh, adding um, 
envelope support that will lead us to DIDCOM V2. So um, more flexible uh, DID communication, including NISP curves and being able to um, um, uh, proceed to uh, handle the crypto at the, at the uh, communication layer. Um, then it's the credential exchange protocols that have really been made agnostic. So anything that was sort of indie specific has been sort of backed out so that whatever attachment uh, of type you attach um, works. So that, that's what's allowing us to do the, the W3C standard JSON LD credentials, but yet use the exact same protocol. So conceivably an issuer can um, have a protocol where they connect with a holder who says, yeah, uh, I would like a credential. And by the way, I'd like it in, in, in JSON format. And then they can connect to a different one who says, oh, I, I'd like it in indie format. Um, same thing with proof requests, um, building it into um, the protocols allow that sort of flexibility across it. And now this V2 versions of those protocols really take out all of the pieces that tie it tightly to Indy and, and separate it out so we can use it um, regardless of what protocols uh, or, or what uh, credential format um, is being used. Great. Cool. Um... Okay. Oh, and sorry, and, and did, did resolution in multiple ledgers. Um, that also was obviously if, um, because right. the, we're tied quite tightly, um, now that we're going to have, uh, you know, be able to go to any ledger, BBS plus, we don't have to have extra ledger objects that you have in Indy, um, makes it more flexible to go to different ledgers. So I think that's a, another big um, step from AIP one to two. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Great, yeah. This, these are all these are all good uh, <laughs> good things to hear that are already, um, yeah, in, in the test suite. That's great. Um, okay, uh, last last call for questions before we switch topics a little bit. Um, okay, well, um, definitely. Thank you so much for for this, and we will definitely have you back when we do a follow up on. Um, bu building things against AIP2 <laughs> and, uh, and the sandbox and, and other related topics. Um, and yeah, this, this was really great. This is exciting uh, to see. Um, and so, 